Hey, what's up, guys? On this episode of Mike Glover Actual, we're talking about reacting to war photos. I started this on Philcraft Survival's page, the Philcraft Survival channel. If you guys are interested, it's in a link below. But when I started this page, I was like, man, I want to focus on things that I'm interested in. Combat Reacts is one of the channels. Rallying is one of the channels. Doing the vehicle walkarounds and that cool stuff because I'm living that life now. Also, the war photos thing. One, I, I've never really broken down these photos besides posting them. Uh, somebody once told me, you go, Mike, you, you take a lot of photos, man. Like, I, I wish I would have thought of that. And I went, really, I didn't take photos because I'm the guy in the photo. So somebody on my team was always taking pictures. I was just good at, like, collecting them. So it's not a lot of photos of me taking pictures of stuff or myself because a selfie wasn't even a thing back then. But I have a lot of photos because guys on my teams took a lot of photos, and I, I got those. Now, I do have a lot of photos of Afghanistan, depending on where I was at, because I appreciated the, the beauty of Afghanistan outside of the uh, Taliban and war. But, like, for example, this picture. This picture was definitely taken by somebody. It's not me holding a, a, a selfie stick cam. Um, this is all somebody else. But I wanted to describe these pictures so you guys can get a little context for kind of hey, what was going on in that time period in my life? So here we go. Um, so let me identify some of the kit on this for you kit guys out there. So we got a 240 Bravo. That's a, a, a machine gun, obviously the most casualty producing uh, machine gun on a swing arm. This is on the back of a striker. During this time period, we were driving in strikers with open bays so we could pr protect ourselves with some kind of security because not all angles were covered by a remote system. Also on this, I'm wearing a ballistic helmet. This one's not cut yet, but we just got these little surefire lights I thought were pretty neat. Uh, you need these surefire lights when you're, you know, interrogating somebody on target, when you're doing sensitive site exploitation, going through people's stuff, um, when you're looking and assessing booby traps, the list goes on. I remember this one has like a low setting, uh, and it was all LED lights, so you could advance the setting to more lumens if necessary. But it was mostly used for things that were at your hands. I, I was wearing AVS-6 night vision goggles in this picture that were rigged to a battery pack. Um, uh, CAG gave us the battery packs during this rotation because we were working with them. And they had four AA batteries, which I thought was great, except you just had a lot of weight. It's not like PVS-31s where you run one AA battery and you're set up for success. This one, you had to strike a balance, like a literal balance, front and rear. Now, unlike the PVS 15s that were super heavy, where the year prior, I wore weights attached to my helmet, which is one of the reasons I have compressed disc in my neck. These are aviator night vision goggles. These are AVS 6. In fact, I think these literally on the actual tubes had 1980s written on them. Remember, aviators were using night vision goggles in Task Force 160th way, way, way back in the day. I don't know the actual reference for it, but definitely in the 80s. So when we look at this uh, carbine setup, we are run, running shorty carbines. Uh, that's probably a 10-inch barrel, if not less, um, with a Pac-2 Alpha with the new uh, Surefire. I think that's like the, uh, we call it the broom handle. It's like a 300-something nomenclature, maybe M300. Um, with uh, aluminum magazines. This is before Magpul even existed. Maybe they were out, but we, we certainly didn't have uh, them at this time period. This, I believe, is 2006, 2007 time period at the height of fighting Al-Qaeda. I have a um, carrying handle on this one with an EOTech mounted on the carrying handle that used like a N N42 battery. N42? You guys can correct me in comments below if you know the actual name. It's either N48 or N42. Some small little funky battery that was like super weird. It was like a super weird battery. I have it taped, an additional one, taped on top of my optic because we didn't know how long we'd be out for and I wanted to have that spare battery on my gun just in case. So I'm using these gloves. Uh, I've caught a lot of crap for these gloves. Like, why would you need those? Well, if you breach for a living, which I did during this time period with shotguns, explosive breaches, even punching through doors because they're hollow core, if, if you came across it, you need gloves and you need knuckle protection. So I wore these and every time I didn't wear them, 
I would cut my hands up. I got scars all over my hands from from uh, not wearing gloves. Um, this is Paraclete body armor. I was O positive, as you can see. Um, and my call sign is right next to my American flag patch. I was a new guy as an assaulter, or ac actually as a sniper, I was a new guy on this team, but I had experience. I think this is my third or fourth combat rotation. So I wasn't a new cherry, but that was my setup. I'm running this new uh, Vizio, I think it's called Vizio, comm setup where you use the little tube. Uh, you know, the big problem is it's not um, the best ear protection um, and I didn't like it. I wore it for one trip and decided, hey, I'm just going to go back to Peltors. The reason I had that specific setup running for my comm setup to my ear is because we didn't have cut Mitch helmets at that time. Some of the guys did, but that's before Ops Core. It's before all the high speed stuff. So I had to run that in my ear because Peltors would be crushing my head. Now we got smart. We started cutting our helmets, like literally with a bandsaw, um, but we started uh, evolving. Um, trauma shears, I ran trauma shears mostly to cut flex cuffs off of people after we rolled them up because our, our rule was every person we came across, for the exception of children, we flex cuffed. And during sensitive site exploitation, we winded up pulling it off. Um, rubber band, that rubber band was likely holding a mini fragmentation grenade that I used. And oh, you see this guy right here? That's a, that's a, that's a pin for a flashbang. So I used flashbangs, my mini grenade, and this is post being in a gunfight. I, I remember this day. This is right when we came out of Solder City. We had a big gunfight. Um, on that target, I killed three enemy combatants by myself. Um, the, these specific objectives that we hit were hot. During that time period, Solder City was a free fire zone and we were getting shot up every time we went in. Anti-aircraft gunfire at the, at the helicopters and the airplanes supporting us, it was bad. Right here, I got a, a straight antenna on my embitter and I'm running a Sh Strider knife that's an empty mod knife that was given to me by the owner of Strider in Afghanistan about three years prior to this picture. I was a poor E6 in the US Army, probably E6 in this picture or E7, new, new E7, a sergeant first class, but he gave me that knife. That knife right now, after nine combat rotations, even warrant GRS, is sitting on my uh, nightstand at home where I could cherish that little beauty. Guys, I, I love doing this because even in that reflection, I look at stuff and I go, I forgot that even happened. Those are the glory days of war for me. Some of you guys who are anti-war are gonna respond down below. It's not about war for me because we were propelled into war. I was just doing my job, but the camaraderie, the brotherhood, the culture, I was at my peak mentally, physically, and I will say it was the best times of my life. We used to call it the meanest times of our life. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification tab. MikeGloverActual.com. Make sure you follow my company, the Philcraft Survival Channel, and PhilcraftSurvival.com. Till next time, peace.